So I play Deathloop, a fast-paced first-person shooter game with the premise of Groundhog Day. You, as Colt Vaughn, are stuck in a time loop, set to forever repeat the same day. The thing is, Colt doesn't very much like the hospitality on Black Reef. So, your mission is simple. Take down seven visionaries, confront your hunter, and then break the loop. Arcane Studios' Deathloop is as invigorating as it is stressful, and the way that combat and stealth mechanics have been utilized to create this excellent blend is fantastic. Waking up on the same beach each morning, Colt Vaughn needs a way to escape the loop, because, um, some glowing text from the future told him to? Anyways, you make your way around the beach, doing some basic tutorial-y stuff, and this is where you learn the most important lesson. Knowledge is power. Seriously though, when the loop restarts, all you ever have is your knowledge of what happened in the last one. Happen to find the code to a certain door? When Black Reef loops again, you'll still have that, and can get further than you were the last time. Colt writes mental notes of each new discovery, and you can use these discoveries to your advantage. What's that? You found this guy sets off fireworks every night, but doesn't know how to deactivate a tampered box? Well maybe if I just swap these wires here and... Being sent to square one every time Black Reef loops can be degrading. Luckily though, Colt has a solution for that. Around the map you'll find deposits of rare material called residuum. Once you've collected enough of it in a given loop, or killed enough people for it, you're able to infuse any weapon, trinket, or slab, allowing them to stay with you once the morning comes. This mechanic is fun and allows for riskier choices, but I do feel that it's slightly limiting. I found that as soon as I infused this shotgun, I used it for the rest of the game. After all, why not? Why shouldn't I? No, seriously, if the game allows you to get a broken weapon on your fourth ever loop, what incentive is there for me to use any others? You can literally play the game from start to finish using one gun only. I know this because that's exactly what I did. Alongside guns, Deathloop introduces slabs. Slabs are... I mean they're slabs, but they're pretty much abilities that you can use depending on your power level. Once again, though, you just need to find one and stick with it. I, personally, like the shift slab, so that's why it's exclusively the only slab you'll be seeing in the entirety of this gameplay footage. I don't know, I feel like there's so much potential for different slab-dependent areas. Like, what if in order to take down one of the game's visionaries, you had to turn invisible, otherwise an array of cameras would spot you? I mean, you can do that in some of the cases. But why turn invisible and perform a 9 hour stealth operation when you can teleport in, use your shotgun, and then teleport out? Visionaries would have been such a great opportunity for moments like this. Each part of the island has its resident visionaries, leaders who bring stability to the loop and the eternalists inside of it. In order to break the loop, you need to kill all of them, and strike when the loop is vulnerable. Sounds difficult, right? Yeah, it does. It does sound difficult. So then why do they die in one hit? Just one headshot can bring down the literal pillars of Black Reef. I understand that there's stealthy ways you can assassinate them, like by, I don't know, sabotaging a box of fireworks, but you shouldn't be able to no-brain kill them in one-on-one -on -one combat. Same goes for your pursuer, Juliana. Juliana is like Colt, she remembers previous loops, unlike anybody else, but how does she use her knowledge? She invades the area you're in, disables your escape tunnels, and then proceeds to die in one shot. Like, she dies in one shot. What? Julian is built up to be your equal in combat, able to hold a candle to Colt, and yet she can be easily defeated by an average cookie clicker player. Fret not though, there's an option for challenge. What? You can be invaded by other people playing as Juliana? Finally, someone with equal skill level. Now let me just turn on the online mode and you have to turn on the online mode. Why? You have to turn on the online mode. Whenever you play as Juliana, you're forced to sit through 10 minutes of matchmaking. I had to sit through 10 minutes of matchmaking on launch day. Your number of online players will never be as much as it is on day one, unless you're TF2. And even when you do get into a game, you just have to wait 10 minutes for the person you're hunting to slip off into the sewers before you even see them. Juliana seems to have her own separate loadout too, which only adds to the aggravating experience that is online mode. Luckily though, the folks over at Arcane do know how to make a single player experience, so Deathloop is sprinkled with a multitude of diverse features. Trinkets, for example, allow small buffs, like the ability to double jump, 
never unequip this one, quieter movement, and more damage output. Mostly though, I'm just happy that Arcane added over 30 of them so I can casually disregard most of them and then use the same four through my entire playthrough. Deathloop is a perfect premise for a new type of shooter. The temporal mechanics could lead to something new in the genre, making it stand out from all the Call of Duties that feel copy-pasted. But nope, the loop mechanic only feels unique for the first couple hours of gameplay, and from then on you have your loadout locked for the rest of the game. But nope, the loop mechanic only feels unique for the first couple hours of gameplay, and then from then on you have your loadout locked for the rest of the game. <sighs> Deathloop is fun, it's certainly a good game, but it's not a new game. It's good in a way that any AAA game is good nowadays, but it just doesn't bring anything new. For a game about repeating the same day over and over, Deathloop feels ironic in that it's the latest iteration of a cycle of almost identical games. I'm by no means saying that Deathloop doesn't take chances, risks, or other synonyms for the former, but it overall plays it very safe. There's some mechanics, such as the aforementioned trinkets and slabs, there's the hackamajig, allowing you to hack turrets and cameras. There's a bomb that can switch between a grenade, tripwire, and proximity mine. But at the same time, there's your standard wired down systems like stealth, where a single step reveals your location, but a fully armed turret does not. Deathloop is a good game, but it just isn't a good time loop game. Anything and everything that Deathloop does has been done before and the time loop aspects never seem all that prevalent. I went into Deathloop expecting a roguelike shooter where the loop presents itself with new weapons, new opportunities for battle, and wacky concepts. Instead, I got a pretty standard single player FPS thanks to a little mechanic called Residuum. Mechanically, Deathloop is a bog standard shooter with some fun elements. It can be approached in many different ways. Personally, I played the game quite stealthily, using abilities like Shift to go from rooftop to rooftop as opposed to the more obvious run-and-gun style of combat the game can present you with. My favorite parts of Deathloop weren't in the gameplay, but in the world. Deathloop's world of Black Reef is as compelling as it is terrifying. The world is strong, and practically brimming with personality. The dynamic between characters like Colt and Juliana leads to hilarious dialogue, albeit a little bugged. Micromanaging the visionary schedule so that they're all together, ready to be killed, is a great idea and is sometimes executed very well. The visionaries are interesting characters too. I mean, most of them. Some characters like Harriet and Igor are as forgettable as they come. For some reason though, the visionaries have a really funny trait in that they file all of their papers in the worst possible places so that I have to spend 23 minutes searching for them. Because this game is evil, I guess. Deathloop is the best shooter I've played all year. Maybe that has something to do with it being the only shooter I've played, but who knows. The game executes almost everything well, and I highly recommend it to anyone who wants to play a good single player shooter. I don't, however, recommend Deathloop to anyone who's hooked on the idea of a roguelike version of Dishonored, because this just isn't it. Deathloop is a game that feels conflicted. It wants to deliver an immersive single player campaign, but at the same time it wants to make character skins you'll never be able to see. It wants to provide an online tie-in, but it doesn't want to make it mandatory, leading to 20 minute queue times. Most of all though, I found that Deathloop tries to be, no, wants to be the next innovation in shooter games, but it doesn't introduce enough new concepts to be just that. I absolutely adored how Deathloop handled its style, and I thought that the entire aesthetic was amazing. Deathloop might not be an amazing game, but it's an amazing concept, and the beautiful art and stylistic choices that are prevalent through the entire story really make up for the lack in gameplay. Overall, Deathloop might not be the most substantial game, but it's definitely a fun game, and I would recommend it to anyone who's looking for a good first-person shooter, even if it's not the best one ever. With that said and done, I've been Chepek, and thank you for watching.